Think about it. You can look at any business, and if you want to know what shifts a business, what shifts your life, there's one force, decision making. Decision making is the force that shapes destiny, personal, corporate, business destiny. How many of you can think of decisions that you made years ago, one or two decisions, five, 10, 15 years ago, that that decision, you may not have realized it at the time, but that decision was one of the most important decisions of your life. If you'd made a different decision there, you'd gone a different direction, your life would be completely different today. Who can relate to this in your life? Say I. The secret then is getting darn good at making more effective decisions. Now, by the way, are we always going to make the right decision, yes or no? Absolutely not, no way in a million years. But most people don't have the guts to make the tough decisions because they want to make the right decision, so they make no decision. And that's a decision. Isn't it true? And what happens is the world takes them over. So decision making is the power. Now, there's three decisions you're making every moment of your life and of your business. And you're making it right now in this room. And if you're watching here on film especially, you might make some decisions because you're not in the environment that's different. But the first decision you're making every moment of your life that affects your life and business is what are you going to focus on? Because whatever you focus on, you're going to feel. So as a business owner, every employee you have each day comes in and they make decisions about what to focus on. Some people focus on their own needs. Some people focus on the customer's needs. Is that going to change the quality of what your business does? How it does, yes or no? A little or completely? Completely. Because some people focus on what they can't control every day. Can you predict, if you're focusing every day on what you can't control, how you're going to feel about your life or your business? You're going to be overwhelmed, you're going to be depressed, you're going to be frustrated. Right now, you're deciding what to focus on. You're going to be focusing on, okay, we're getting into it now. I got the energy, now we're going to get into the meat of this. You're right, all business is decision making, better decisions, better life. Or you'd be saying, wow, my neighbor smells after all that jumping up and down. Notice that focus, right? Whatever you focus on, you're going to experience though, true? Now, some people make a decision and then they focus on the decision about how it didn't work out versus what they learned. Because there are going to be plenty of decisions that don't work out. In fact, probably if we were honest, most of us forget them. But most of our decisions aren't necessarily the right decisions if we make gutsy ones. But the ultimate decision is the ability to choose again. So focus is a decision. It's happening right now. It's happening in your business. But here's what we're looking for. There's a pattern of focus. At some stages in business, as you're going to learn today, the focus of the entrepreneur in the business is increasing sales. And they increase sales, increase sales, and when they're successful, they eventually fail. Because their sales are increasing, but what's not? Someone tell me, what's not? Profits. Some people are totally focused on profits, profits, profits. Can you make any company profitable, yes or no? Sure you can. Cut enough stuff, you can make any company profitable. For a while. A day, a week, a month, a year, a decade. True? At different stages in a business, you must change your focus. There's a life cycle to a business. If you're going to make effective decisions, you've got to know where you are in that life cycle. You make decisions differently for a teenager than a toddler, than a grown adult, don't you? Same thing's true in a business, in your life. So if you're going to control your life, the way you take control is by making new choices. If you don't like how things are, what do you got to do? Change it. And to change it, you have to make a decision. And by the way, leaders make decisions. That's what makes somebody a leader. They have the guts to make the most difficult decisions nobody else has the guts to make. And they know they're going to be wrong. But if they're wrong, what will they do? They'll know what they want, they see it's not working, and they'll do what? Change it, which means they'll make another decision, do something new, and see if it works. That's the essence of how we grow. So first decision that controls your life is focus. Lots of patterns. Some people focus on what they can control. Some focus on what they can't control. Some focus on customers, as I said. Some focus on themselves. If you've made this whole business about meeting your needs, you can run a successful business, but it'll be a job. Because you'll never be able to sell it. Because if it's just meeting your needs, it's not a system. It demands your attention, your connection. It's giving what you want. But ultimately, it's not going to give somebody else what they want, so you can't sell it. If you can't sell your business, if you don't have an exit strategy, you have a job. I don't care how successful the business is. That doesn't mean you have to sell the business. But one of the most important decisions you make in business is, ultimately, if I was going to sell this, if I chose to, I have to know who what I sell this to so that I have long-term value, not just an income along the way. I have this critical mass here. I get a multiple of my business. 
And most people don't have a clear exit strategy. They think I'll come up with that someday. You gotta start with that end in mind. That's gotta be part of your focus if you're gonna be successful in your business. I can remember um, a gentleman who built CAA in Hollywood, his largest, most successful agency, right? Michael Ovitz, remember that name? He put together Nike and Coca-Cola and these billion dollar deals. And eventually, Mike Ovitz went to go sell that business. He never thought through an exit strategy and he got almost nothing for it. Because the laws prevented him from selling it to a studio. He had to sell it to some of his employees for pennies on its real value. Now, Mike found a way to make money later on in another place off of Disney. But the bottom line is, the guy didn't have an exit strategy. And it was brilliant, made lots of money, in the end didn't get the value. Focus. Your first decision is, what are you going to focus on? Second decision, the minute you focus on something, you're going to feel it. So if you focus on, oh my God, the economy's coming apart. My industries, you know, people are not buying my product or service. They're shutting it down. Consumers are not spending the money. Is that going to affect your state? Yes or no? Now, should you lie to yourself and just pretend there aren't challenges? No. But you're going to have to focus instead on, what am I going to do? What's the need that's still there in any marketplace? There's always still people buying. I've seen it throughout the years. Even in some simple little business, let's say you're a realtor, you have your own little real estate office, or you kind of your own salesperson, you got a couple of people that work with you that help you leverage yourself. Something that simple. I remember years ago, I met a woman named Marty Rodriguez. She's from the town I grew up in. She came to one of my seminars, and then she would be sitting in the front row, and I did, in a year, I may have done 25 seminars. She was probably at 10 of them. Same seminar in the front row. This is a woman who was the number one real estate agent for Century 21 in the free world. Nine out of 11 years, I watched her in good times make money, in the worst times make money. A few years ago, she sold more real estate in the city she's from than the entire multiple listing service of other agents combined. One person. Now she built it into a business. She's got a whole team that runs it, but it's still her. She built the brand. How does she do well when it's going horrible? She says, I love when the economy gets terrible because it gets rid of all those flaky realtors. All those flaky mortgage brokers, there were so many of them. They got in the business, was going up, and they all got successful because they were on a trend. When the trend crashed, they all left, left me all the business. She loves these times. But the reason is her focus is different. Does that make sense? Completely different focus. So, when you're focusing, you've got to decide what I'm going to focus on. But as soon as you focus on something, even if it's not true, you're going to feel it. So if you think someone tells you, someone screwed you over, they took advantage of you, and you're like, what? And you're all upset, and you picture it in your mind, and now you're angry. And then later you go to confront this person and you find out it wasn't true. Who's ever had something like this happen and felt like an idiot? Raise your hand and say, I. But when you focus on it, does it control you? Do you feel it? Yes or no? So just write focus equals feeling. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel. And as a leader, you're going to have to manage those feelings. And you're going to do it by managing your focus. By the way, if you're going to lead other people, do you have to create a focus for the company, for the organization to be successful? Yes or no? You gotta find yourself, what are people focusing on? It's affecting all the decisions in the company. So as soon as you focus on it, finally get to decision number two. Decision number two is, what does this mean? When you focus on something, you gotta give it a meaning. Is this the end or the beginning? If you think this is the end of your business, the end of opportunity, the end of our economy, are you gonna feel differently and act differently than if you think it's the beginning, yes or no? See, the difference between Joe Kennedy with four million bucks in 1929 and Joe Kennedy with 180 plus million dollars in 1932, that big a jump, different focus, different meaning. When everybody else said it was the end and they were focusing on how to survive, he was focusing on how to take market share, he was focusing on what the opportunities were. The meaning for him was, is this the greatest opportunity of my lifetime? There'll never be another time like this. And he made enough money in that time that took care of all his heirs after that for decades to come all because he had a different focus and a different meaning. Listen, if you're in an intimate relationship and you think it's the end of that relationship, are you gonna treat that person the same way as if you think it's the beginning, yes or no? No, somebody's laughing over here, they know, no way. But you know what, in the beginning of a relationship, what will you do for somebody you love? What will you do for them, come on, what? What? If they say, would you take out the trash? What do you say, I'll take out the trash, of course. <laughs> what else would you like me to do? Isn't it true? After three or four years, they say, or five or seven, they go, we take out the trash. The person goes, what do I look like, your janitor? And they go, I don't know what it is. We don't seem to have the same attraction. I don't know what happened. Here's what I tell people. Treat people at the end of the relationship 
like it's the beginning and there won't be an end. And that's not just your intimate relationship. What if your customers, what if you fell in love with your customers, with your clients, more than your product, more than your company? If your entire life was about meeting their needs, if you would do what for your customers and clients, you would do what? If you love your customers and clients, you do anything, guess what? They're going to love you. But most people love their customers and clients as long as they buy from them, do what they want, respond to them. And when they don't, they go, that's the end. You want clients for life, not just customers? Fall in love with them. It's a different focus, isn't it? It's a different meaning. And that creates a different life because you make decisions differently from that place. There's another meaning. You know, is this punishment in my business? Am I being punished by God? Or am I being challenged? Or is this actually a gift what I'm facing right now? Whatever meaning you give controls what you feel. And what you feel controls the third decision. What are you going to do? Right? The minute you give it a meaning, you get a feeling. When you get a, you know, a feeling, you're going to do something. You're going to take action. You're going to pull back. A whole economy is driven by this. People start focusing on, oh my God, maybe this is going to go on forever. Maybe I'm not going to get what I need. This might be the end of the way things are. I better pull in my reins. I better not spend this money. I better not take any action. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. How many of you know what I'm talking about here? So decision-making is your power. You want to change your business? Think about whatever's changed your business in the past. I guarantee what's changed your business is some decisions you made. You made some decisions that shifted your business in a radical way. Changed things in a way that shifted the game for you. Decisions about people, decisions about products, decisions about marketing or promotion, decisions about locations, decisions about what you're going to offer, your offerings, decisions. You want to change your whole business, you can do it next few days just with some new decisions. But you're going to get stimulated, all kinds of decisions to look at. You've got to decide which ones will make the biggest difference. Today, again, is going to help you understand where those decisions need to be focused based on where you are in the life cycle of your business and where you are in your personal life cycle. By the way, do you make decisions differently? Do you look at time differently when you're 20, then when you're 30, then when you're 40, then when you're 50, then when you're 60, then when you're 70, yes or no? It'll affect your decisions.